Ethan Evans is an ex-VP of engineering at Amazon, where he led Twitch and Prime Gaming. In this exclusive interview with Rahul Pandey, he tells us what he looks for in the top 1% of software engineers, the principals, distinguished engineers, and technical fellows. Today, I'm here with my buddy Shashank, a fellow software engineer at Microsoft, and we're going to be watching to the very end to learn how we too can level up in our careers and earn the big bucks. Secrets like this don't come often. Let's get to it. Uh, for all disclosure, I haven't actually watched this video, so all our insights are going to be off the dome. Shashank didn't even know who the guy was. So I like the way he's staring into my soul. Do you look at that? Today, I'm really excited to talk to Ethan Evans, who has had a very long and illustrious career in tech. He was recently a vice president of engineering at Amazon. You were probably the person in recently, charge. Recently, wait, it said retired? Sorry, I'm not going to stop too often, but I do want to see who this guy is. Dude, he has 82,000 followers on LinkedIn. Look at this. I mean, he's a VP. Almost 16 years at Amazon. He graduated back in 1993. So within five years, he was a VP of operations. He immediately graduated and he was a manager. Uh, okay, cool. You were probably the person in charge of evaluating the most senior ICs out there. You're a principal engineer, senior staff engineer, like these very, very senior levels. So I'm curious about if you could share a little bit at that high level when you get together with other VPs or directors, what kind of conversation are you having to make a judgment on this person's impact? With a principal engineer, or senior staff engineers, they must be technically excellent. That's table stakes. But then as a leader, I'm judging, can they deploy that technical expertise to help me? Can right. they help me make better decisions? Yeah. This is unrelated, but this music sounds like there's going to be a boss fight. I mean, like suddenly there's a senior staff engineer is like, all right. I think the one thing I wanted to say, though, was he, he used the word technically excellent. And he said that was table stakes. So he's basically saying that at the very least, they need to be very technically competent. But I think one distinction here is that technical competence, what he's referring to differs. Like these might not be really good coders. They might have been at some point in their career, but once you've been coding for 10 or 15 years, like you're doing a lot of high level stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like if they gave him a lead code question, they'd be able to solve it. But it's more like, like, yeah, what, what to you is a technical? These people are so smart and have been doing this stuff for so many years. You can, because a lot of software engineering is like, wake up one day and your manager's like, you need to work on this. You look at it. You've never seen that code before. You have no idea what's going on. Mm. But you just have to read through it and try to understand what is happening. And I feel like that's what these people are really good at. Yeah, that makes sense. Can they help me grow other engineers? So are they mentoring? Are they putting okay, in place mentorship. systems? Are they putting in place architectures? And are they helping with critical decisions? And are they willing to do that? Or are they curmudgeons about it? In other words, am I having to like beg them to stop coding or to go to a design review or to help this struggling team? Or are they like, no, where do you need me? I want to have an impact. Mm, that's interesting. So you basically said that if the person was like, I love coding, can I not go to meetings? I don't want to do this technical stuff. Then they might not be looked on as favorably. It's like a lot of meetings, thinking about design, going, basically putting out fires. Isn't it interesting that the higher level you get, like you need different skills to succeed. Mm. So like when you're just software engineer, one, you just have to be good at coding. But then as you grow, you have to get better at design work, thinking, leading projects, understanding how to solve a problem, which is not something you ever really learn in school. You kind of have to learn on the job. Are they bringing me things? Are they coming to me? It's great that they're a guru on the hill, that if I go to them and know to write the, ask the right question, they'll give me the right answer. That's table stakes. Are they willing to talk about non-technical matters for- The only thing that bothers me, and I'm probably complicit of this, is I feel like so much of this advice is so general. Generic. Yeah. Well, I wish they could have been like, oh, one of my best hires was this person, then give me examples of stuff they built or did, or like very concrete examples. Yeah. But just be like, I want someone who is a go-getter, who like go put out fires. It's like, if I asked my manager right now, he'd be like, Numbin, I want you to do that, right? If I had a manager. Um, and so it's kind of generic. So yeah, I'm evaluating, are you technically capable, but are then you will capable? you use that willingly? Will you help me with it? Will you make yourself useful with it? And those are my stars. If I'm the CEO of the business, are they going to be the CTO who's like, I will make are sure your technology the works. Is so then there's the idea that you might have 20 principal engineers. And so each is a CTO of like a product or a business line where they just own that entire org almost yeah. where they're like the go-to technical expert. I mean, certainly the principal engineers that I've worked with are like that. I think the higher you go, the more expertise is assumed and also ownership of a product. So if anything mm -hmm. happens, that's even adjacent to what you're working on or what 
your area of expertise is, you're called in immediately and you're the point person. You just have to be able mm. to handle it. That's like when uh, when war rooms happen, they're like leading yeah. it. Yeah. There's a lot of this internal communication, I think, that they're talking about. So if you're just heads down working on your product and you're not mm. like helping the others around you or supporting the company, yeah. like you won't succeed. The advice is, is quite generic. And so I can't blame them. But I want pointed examples of like one of the most cracked principal engineers did this. Or like there was a time when I did this. I remember when we interned at Microsoft and I went to some technical fellows presentation he was talking about times when he broke production at microsoft and i learned more from those instances than him just giving me generic career advice it was more fun it was entertaining but i just learned more too i think examples are good because you can put yourself in their shoes and try to understand like would i make that decision probably not that's why they're the technical fellow you know yeah if you want to make the big bucks one day a great place to start is an online boot camp like simply learn their courses and programs are designed and delivered by world-renowned universities and top companies for example, here's a comprehensive Caltech coding bootcamp offered in collaboration with Caltech University where you can get credits and even visit campus. Now, more specifically, if you were interested in learning Java, I check out Simply Learn's full stack Java developer program. You'll get hands-on practice through over 20 projects and assessments while learning cutting edge frameworks like React, Spring Boot, and many more. And you'll be able to attend live lectures from industry experts as they cover topics like AI and machine learning, project management, and so much more. And finally, in partnership with IBM, you'll get a chance to understand how some of the best companies in the world build scalable and lasting software. But don't just take it from me, take it from reputable sources like SwitchUp, Course Report, and Trustpilot, who've given Simply Learn the highest scores across the board. And the learners themselves speak so highly of their experience citing higher salaries and increased career growth opportunities after finishing the bootcamp. Software engineering is a booming industry that is still growing and hiring, even if it may not feel like it today. It's time to take action. The next cohort is starting soon with limited seats available, so make sure to register today using my special link in the description. Now let's get back to some more advice from Ethan Evans. The most important commentary I have for your staff engineers is what Andy Jassy used to say when he ran AWS and not Andy all of Amazon. Jassy. When Andy ran AWS, he said, I like to have principals who are deep and working on very hard problems and don't distract them with having them do a bunch of meetings or architecture because well, if- Isn't this wait, wait, wait. the opposite of what he just said? That's, yeah. Am I having to like beg them to stop coding or to go to a design review or to help this struggling team? Maybe he's gonna address that. Okay. Because if they're on a hard enough problem, it's okay if they just work on that. But the key hmm. was it had to be a hard enough problem that mm. dedicating such a senior person was going to produce that kind of value. And so like we had one engineer who was working on nothing but security and a chip. But of course, at AWS level, if you could like raise the level of security or networking that was baked into the hardware, that was incredibly valuable. And it was fine that we were burning a whole principal and he didn't participate in any meetings or or coach or mentor anybody else because the technical solution was so valuable. Okay, so two things finally gave me an example. That's so cool. Like yeah. I wanna know who this principal engineer was, worked on the security for a chip at AWS. That's crazy. That's awesome. And then two, I guess he's basically saying that I want someone who loves non-technical things unless they're working on something that is so hard and valuable that it's okay for some time period for them to be, just be heads down. One thing to remember is that there's not just one principal engineer. There might be like a handful of technical fellows, but I mean, those guys are like gods. There, there really is just a couple, but there's a lot of principal engineers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of senior staff, staff. Yeah. And so at a company like Microsoft or Amazon, I don't know, you have the order of at least hundreds of principal engineers or like very, very technical leaders. Yeah. And so it's okay if 80% 80, 80 of them are doing the mentoring and non-technical and then being good faces and like doing public speaking. And then you have like 20 people who are just heads down. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm sure there's some people that burn out too. You work 10, 15 years in tech, you're coding every day and you're like, you know what? Maybe I do want to put on a suit and go do some keynotes and like present things and just like grow in other ways in my career. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would want to do that at some point. Yeah. I mean, I do it right now, but I think you go in and out of phases. Yeah, and right? I also think these people generally are very, very smart and capable people that have multiple interests anyways. So they don't want to be heads down coding all the time. Usually, I mean, a lot of people do enjoy that a lot. I mean, that's why we're in this field. But they also like doing other things, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, Rahul, Ethan, love the content. I was just waiting for this stuff. So we got in. We got it. And then I'm happy to have someone who's just an expert. As a IC or manager, what would you say is the most important skill to evaluate in my own manager? Because I think, to mm. your point, I want to go work for a leader who is garnering more and more resources more and more scope because that will kind of flow down to me as a manager or an IC. What would be the skill to look for in my leader? So I would say there's two things. The first is, do they invest in people? Do they have a track record of growing and promoting people? Because they may be succeeding, 
but are they gonna take you with them? Another way to look at that is, do they have a set of people who follow them from role to role or team to team, company to company? Because mm. if they have people who want to work for them, this it's is, a good sign This is start. something, I mean, I'm still pretty junior in my career, but a lot of people say you don't leave bad companies or bad compensation or bad products, you leave bad managers. Uh, and that's interesting. I don't know how many people follow managers. Actually, that's a lie though. I feel like when layoffs have been happening, a lot of people reach out to old colleagues and they love pe the people they loved working with. And they're like, hey, can I? And then it's easy because you don't need referrals and stuff. The person will just vouch for you and be like, hey, let's just bring this person on. Probably the number one characteristic I look for in a manager is, will they go to bat for me? Because they tell you a bunch of things, right? Like, hey, I went to promo, I did this, I did this. And you have to trust that they really did it. Cause it's easy to try a little bit, but it's hard to really keep pushing and to really trust that your manager will put you first. I feel like it's the only thing I care about. The second thing is what is their trajectory? So this one's really easy. You go to LinkedIn and you look at their history if it's there and otherwise you figure it out some other way. But are they moving up consistently? Do they have a track record of growth? But I've never, I mean, I've looked up their LinkedIn and been like, what have they, what have they been up to? But I haven't ever looked at like trajectory or compared them or not done statistics, but been like, has one person done more or less? I kind of just go up with that personal fit. But it seems like one thing to consider is how have they been performing in their own careers? If someone's been really gunning it in their career, that doesn't necessarily make them a good manager. Right? Yeah, they might be true. someone who like really pushes you, like kind of works you really hard, like past what's kind of reasonable or maybe what you want. Like, I don't think it's necessarily the best predictor predictor because a lot of it is luck is involved in that so you don't know generally it's good yeah but if i mean if they're a manager at the company that you want to work for like odds are that you know they're pretty competent if they have had a trajectory of oh they were an engineer then a lead yeah, engineer, kind of then a the manager again. then a senior manager it's and like, each I forget about it six sometimes. months or a year faster than other people then probably they're going to jump again faster could you care about the reverse? Like if they're so good, would you not be concerned that they might just get promoted and then no longer manage a team or manager, manager, managers, and then you have another manager and maybe I won't actually be able to foster that relationship because they'll just be moving in their career. But I feel like, I mean, I do this, maybe it's just like says something about me, but with my friends and my relationships, even professionally, I want there to be some sort of longevity. Yeah. If it's going to be like I hop in and then I have to change every six months and it's like hard for me to be invested. That's fair. So there was a spate where I had a new manager like every couple months at the start of my time at Microsoft. And how'd that feel? It sucked because you have to build rapport with your manager every time. And yeah. it's just really frustrating. You don't get that long story. Churn is definitely pretty difficult to deal with. And if you hitch your car to their slow train, you're going to be on the slow train too. If your team's career is on the slow train, right? Like yeah. You as, let's say, an entry-level software engineer, I don't think it matters as much. I think the higher you go, the more like the impact of your team and the people around you and your manager matters, right? Mm. I also feel like the, the more junior you are, the more your work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. Like if you just commit stuff, if you push PRs, you build projects, you're leading stuff, like everyone knows. It doesn't matter if your manager's fighting. Mm -hmm. But when you're like at that staff level, like you could be crushing it but so is everyone else and it's hard to know like because so much of it is non-technical mm -hmm. is how someone going to prove that you truly led it your manager has to be like hey no he led the stand-up he did this he did the updates but maybe when you're a junior it's like what is your manager going to say they're going to look for data mm -hmm. and so then maybe it matters i think it's easier to showcase that they've been working and doing it and uh yeah. making it yeah rahul thanks man appreciate it